welcome to this special edition of Talking Europe, brought to you from this beautiful Solvay Library in the heart of Brussels, in a country, of course, at the heart of the EU. Belgium is home to the EU institutions and hosts its numerous summits. It's also been a country hit by many of the problems common across the bloc, notably terrorism. It's now six months since attacks rocked the capital, killing over 30 people and leaving scores more wounded. Six months on, we're going to look at uh, the lie of the land in Belgium, at what's changed over the past year or so and what still needs to change. So welcome our guests. We have with us Mr. Alexander de Croo. You're the Belgian Deputy Prime Minister. You're also the Minister for Telecommunications and the Digital Agenda. You are with the Open VLD, which is a Flemish Liberal and Democrats party. Uh, on the opposite side of the table, we have Mr. Philippe Lambert. You're the Vice President of the Greens in the European Parliament, so be able to give us that uh, EU view even more. Uh, with us also, we have Christine Dufresne. You're the President of the Belgian Senate, and you are with the MOR party, which is a Liberal Francophone party, it has to be pointed out. Um, also joining us, we have Gwenaël Grovenu. So you're an MP with the Opposition Socialists in the Federal Parliament. Thank you all for being with us. Um, Mr. De Croix, maybe perhaps start with yourself. We're just over six months on. What has changed in Belgium in terms of security? I think in terms of security, a lot has changed. And, and even before already, a lot of things were, were, were starting to, to change. Uh, up to now, I mean, up to March, uh, terrorism was for the Belgians something they would see on TV, they would feel very sorry, but never really imagined that it could happen in our, in our own country. Still, I think the reaction of the Belgian people has actually been a quite calm reaction. I think we haven't seen uh, xenophobe debates, uh, we, we, we haven't seen outbursts of, of, of violence and these kind of things. I think in general, Belgians reacted in a very, uh, very calm way. We have taken, uh, taken measures and we will continue taking measures, still knowing and I think rightfully explaining to the public that the life with zero risk does not does not exist. I mean, this is an illusion that we do not want to uh, want to create. Indeed, however, many uh, surveys suggest that per capita there's more Belgians traveling to uh, uh, zones like Syria and becoming radicalized. Yep. I believe uh, Minister Yan Yan Bon proposed 400 million euros after those attacks, in mm -hmm. wanting to pour that into prevention measures. Uh, Mr. Lambert, you know, do you, have you seen changes in that, like working towards preventing this well, radicalization? It's hard to see changes because. Uh, the the, the very reason why uh, Belgium has uh, produced uh, such a large number of homegrown terrorists uh, speaks about uh, the policies that have been carried out in Belgium for decades in terms of lack of integration, <coughs> lack of equal opportunities, and uh, we see a growing number of our own citizens because these are people born here, who grew up here, who feel totally alienated from this, uh, from this society. Why is it so? Well, because well, we have had uh, policies that have failed at really integrating them into the social fabric. And I'm afraid to say that uh, I can agree with a number of things that uh, what Mr. De Croix said, but the current government is just increasing inequality. And it's nice to say, OK, we are going to uh, put 400 million here or there. But if you have a fiscal policy, a social policy that is increasing tensions in society, I'm not sure that you're doing a very good job. Mr. Ferrand? So I could share the diagnosis, and you were a member, your party member of the government and member in sure. the, of the government in the South, that of course we are really uh, worried because uh, our young people from the second, third generation, they turn uh, themselves to uh, all the purpose, and we have to understand why. And we would agree, everybody to work on education, to work on culture to work on prevention but unfortunately we have to, to to take measures and I think that the government has taken good measures of course you you mentioned that uh, the, the the budget was uh, added for hundred million has that been uh, spent yes it has been spent but other measures also for defense for uh, um, Intel uh, and services but um, well as mr. de Croo said the the <coughs> risk zero doesn't exist and we work we have to to keep on working on the integration to give equality of chances to to get a job uh, to to be uh, you know aware to live in the society but this is also and mr de Croo can tell that perfectly because he's minister of cooperation of development this is also an international 
issue, and we have to talk about this also. This Indeed, is not only the problem the of EU. Belgium. This is a European issue, but also a worldwide issue. Absolutely, we definitely see divisions uh, in societies across uh, the world. Uh, sadly enough, uh, Miss Grovenus, uh, can I get your opinion on that? Comparatively, how do you feel Belgium is doing? I mean, a lot of finger pointing at certain neighbourhoods in in Belgium after these attacks, feeling that there was really uh, certain societies that were forced to live together and creating these kind of hubs of certain types of people. Have things changed in that sense, or do you think Belgium has created, in a way, its own problem? I th I hope that uh, things would change in the future, but actually, I'm not really sure that the measures that are taken by the government. Uh, are really the good measures uh, if you want to tackle really the terrorist issues. Like? Um, I mean, we are in a government which has taken very hard measures uh, in terms of uh, uh, budget, uh, very hard measures uh, for the more weakest in our society. Uh, it's really uh, austerity which is now uh, the leitmotiv of this government. Mm -hmm. And without having budget to tackle these important issues, I don't think that we can have more integration and that we can tackle the real roots of terrorists. For example, I, I will take one simple example. I think that we need to uh, uh, really uh, uh, improve uh, the fight against war weapons uh, traffic and also art traffic. Indeed, apparently there's no record of the amount of Weapons? Uh, no, no, there is. No, there and is. there is. Of there is. There is. For example, the art uh, traffic, uh, work art traffic uh, department. Now, the government decided just to cut cut off the budget and the people working there. Mr. de Kroo, can I bring you in on the reaction of uh, perhaps focusing, I mean, Belgium has been looking at reducing its national debt and you know, doing a lot on that issue. Uh, that argument that perhaps more investment needs to go to certain areas of society, that the economy, Belgium is perhaps trying to be too severe in its economy, focusing well, too but, much but, on the austerity I mean, measures. Let's, let's just look at the numbers. I mean, if you look at the income inequality, Belgium is the most equalizing country of Europe. You look at the Gini coefficient before taxes and after taxes, there's no country that is more equalizing than this. We're one of the most equal, equalized countries in Europe, and that's a good thing. And you because want to reduce have, it. That's because we have a, fix, a fiscal system that is actually helping. But, but is that changing? Well, but let's, let's face it. I mean, the people who are extremists today, do you think they became extremists the day that this government started? No. no I mean, this, this, is a, this is a complete illusion. Let's be fair about this. You've all, been in government, you've all been in government the, the last 10 years. The real issue is, mm -hmm. indeed, how do we live together? Well, no. that, is indeed the real, that is indeed the real yeah. issue. Now, living together, I believe, is giving people a sense in life, is giving people a job, is giving them ambition, is giving them the right, uh, the right education. You are not doing that by giving them more welfare. You're not doing that by, by pampering them more. You're doing that by giving them a real opportunity, but also I mean, making clear that if you want to be part of Belgian life, there is a part of it which is giving, okay. saying to people, you need to take up your lives. Now, and this comes to a very basic thing, I mean, Yes, when someone comes to live here, you need to respect our norms and values. Mm. But from another perspective, and I think that is the real problem, we have to stop with racism. I mean, you cannot say you have to be like us, but if you're looking for a job, you will never be like us. That is not something... That's I agree with that. And, and my wife is teaching in one of the poorest neighborhoods here in Brussels. Lots of people from Molenbeek, from St. Joost and Norde, et cetera, et cetera. 20 years ago, 25 years, almost 30 years when she started, the, the promise, okay, if you study, you will build yourself a future, that story held no longer. Because they've seen generation after generation of young people with Mohammed as, as first name, of Samia as a first name, who studied hard the and then place. ended up jobless, discriminated against. That's fact in Belgium. Uh, I agree with you that indeed the taxation mm -hmm. system reduces inequality, but you wanted to, to, to reduce that effect. That's not but, true. That's but not true. That's this, not is, true, this is a country. It's, it's a this lie. is a country that is discriminating for jobs, and well, basically, I think that we agree on that. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. is something that needs to change. And frankly speaking, I must praise the well, the vast majority of the, the Belgian political class for not falling into the kind of pitfalls that we see in France with Sarkozy and, and this race to the extremism, with the exception 
of the Flemish Nationalist Party, who is basically playing on that court. I mean, when you have the interior minister saying, well, I'm going to clean up every house of Molenbeek one by one, what is that? This is, I, I'm, I'm glad that this is an exception, but we, we hear these kind of stupidities uh, from that some that ministers in this. Well, but um, you know, I, I know this is a debate and uh, the duty of the opposition is to oppose and I know that we ha can have uh, Didn't he polemic say that? and uh, Didn't that, he say we, that? We, that we, I heard uh, what you, you say, uh, this is MP, and this is normal. I can agree we, we can have the debate, but I think the characteristic of the Belgian people, as we say, that they react with dignity, with resilience, and Both. that they were able to face, to cope with the disaster, and to find solution. That's our spirit in Belgium, to find solution for a, a problem that, which is larger than let Belgium alone. Indeed, the divisions in Belgium are much larger than any neighbourhood. I mean, everybody remembers the world record in Belgium. You have division Belgium. in many countries. In the UK, at, you have a big division. And let's look at the Belgian case, Scots and, uh, which is the goal of this show. But, you know, 589 dates without a government. This United Kingdom is becoming a disunited kingdom. And we are doing debate after the debate <laughs> on the UK. Um, but let's look at your government. There's now three Flemish parties and one French-speaking party all working together. Uh, Mr. Ducou, for example, how the divisions of the past, that world-breaking record that we had of no government about, are they over? Is it now working together, well, these French Flemish sides? Well, let's put a few things straight. It's not true that we didn't have a government. I mean, during that time, we had a government, and that yes. government was functioning, and you had regional governments that were functioning uh, perfectly. That was a difficult time in forming a government, and we did so in the end. Now, if you look at the statistics, for example, in Flanders, and you look over the last 20 years and you ask the question, do you want an independent Flanders? It's always between, been between 10 and 15% of people who want that. That hasn't really changed. People have sometimes voted for nationalist parties, but for other reasons. Yeah. And I think, Mr. Lambrecht, you give some ideas on, uh, on that. Um, I actually think that this is often exaggerated often not understood. Mm. And I think it's part of a tension that you have in any Western society today. Name me one country, one Western country today, where you cannot say that there is strong doubts about the functioning of the politics France today. Yes. I mean, it's, it's part of the times, unfortunately. Mr. Friend, briefly, and yes, then I Belgium is, a, is a small country, but uh, in the heart of Europe, and we are convinced we're European, and we are working for federal uh, Europe. And of course, we have differences. We have uh, had uh, division in our country, but we, we always manage to find solution. And I won't swear that there won't be any institutional reform anymore in Belgium, but I'm still confident in the future of my country, because also among the nationalists, they have they, they questioning less nationalists themselves. They now, though, no? Hmm? We, we, we're hearing that they're less nationalists since they took to, well, part to of government. The federal, part they are of the part federal, of the federal, federal government. government that is, so that's dropped off the agenda for now. No, no, you know? no, Once no, you get I'm to power, I'm more worried. I'm, I'm more worried about the situation at the federal government than Ms. my colleagues. Ms. Gorbinus, so I, am, I am curious this as well. The fact that of having three federal governments, of having, we have so many systems in Belgium. Well, for us looking from the outside, um, there's so many layers more than other countries. Is that not part of the problem? Do we not need to reduce some of the layers? No, that's not the, the, the matter for me, but the matter today is this nationalist party, the NVA, at the federal government. I mean, today we've got this nationalist party, which is from the beginning coalition. wishing the end of Belgium. So how can we, can we very, uh, uh, in a very calm way, look at all the four million French-speaking Belgians, saying to them, don't worry, Belgium is, go is uh, going to be good. Yeah. Well, right. Being really leading difficult. the country with this party, I I'm just quoting maybe some statements of the president of that party in the few days in the before. Few days. Mm -hmm. 
He was just saying that NVA was, is, and will remain a Flemish nationalist party forever, Mr. and Mr. that Mr. they have been fighting that. for the Flemish independence from the beginning, and that they are conducting policies that are good for Flanders at the federal level. So for you, a way for the Francophones in Belgium. Yes. statement of a president of Nothing a party. This is only politics, but uh, we have to, to see the, the result, the measure taken, and... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't have to worry. Uh, we, we, we defend uh, the French-speaking uh, people in our country. We are there. Don't worry. I, yeah. I'm, not saying, I'm not but saying... But I, I wanted I'm to react to your question about the ladies in Belgium. Actually, I'm not that worried about the, the future of the country because first, one should realize, and I worked in a, in a multinational, and for a while we were attached to France, and for a while we Shame were attached to the Netherlands. And... and we Belgians, when we went to Paris or when we went to Amsterdam, we very well realized what we had in common. We do not like grand plans that can't work. We want things that work. We are very much attached to quality of life. Flemish, French speakers, German speakers, whatever. So there's a lot that holds us, including culturally, together. Mm -hmm. I do believe that. So I, I am not worried because when I go to the Flanders and I talk with the people, indeed so I agree with what, uh, what uh, Mr. De Croo said, there's a minority that wants independence. Mm -hmm. Yet we really have to learn better to, uh, to live together. I, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. And that means also for the French, French speakers to realize what lives in the Flanders. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm struck sometimes mm -hmm. at many French speaking politicians who don't speak a word of, uh, of, uh, of Dutch or Flemish, and the other way, way, and vice versa. And, and, and this worries me. Around, this worries yes. me. Because, but, again, the but we have to Belgium to me is a sort of micro-Europe. Yes. And if we can't make Belgium work, then Europe won't work because Europe is much, much more true. complex. But I do believe that if we give it the right level of energy, uh, we, can, we can make it work. Uh, well, there you've heard it. The conclusion of this debate is it's complicated, so perhaps we need more than 17 minutes to put all <laughs> of Belgium's <laughs> woes to right. But thanks indeed to my guests for having joined us. Thanks also to you at home, of course, for having watched and indeed to Edificio for hosting us here in the beautiful Solvay Library. See you after the news for more Talking Europe.